The longest day of the year is the summer solstice, which is between June 20th and 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere, and it would make sense that this would be the earliest sunrise and latest sunset. But it isn't, because at least where I live, the earliest sunset is June 13th and the latest sunrise is June 28th. To understand why, you first have to understand that what we would generally consider to be a day or a solar day is not how long it takes for the Earth to rotate around once or 360 degrees. That would be a sidereal day, and a sidereal day takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. A solar day, however, is how long it takes for a longitudinal line on Earth facing the Sun to rotate around and face the Sun again. Because the Earth is rotating in the same direction it revolves around the Sun, this actually requires about 361 degrees of rotation to make up for the revolutionary motion. The problem is, however, that the length of the solar day isn't consistent. It can vary by almost a minute depending on the time of year it is. This is because of the way the Earth's tilt affects the amount of rotation needed to face the Sun again. This is easiest to comprehend by thinking about the subsolar point. If you don't live in the tropics, then when it's solar noon, the sun actually isn't directly overhead. But there is a location in the tropics somewhere that's on the same line of latitude where the sun is directly overhead, and the sun's rays are perfectly perpendicular to the ground. This is the subsolar point. The time between the subsolar point being on your line of latitude is a solar day. And this point moves north and south throughout the year, from the tropic lines during the solstices to the equator during the equinoxes. Obviously, throughout the day, it moves around the world. Due to the geometry of the way the sun's rays interact with the spherical Earth, the subsolar point actually moves north and south faster around the equinoxes and levels off during the solstices, kind of like a sinusoidal function. This is similar to how the duration of sunlight changes rapidly in the spring and fall, but barely changes at all during the summer and winter. For example, where I live, we gain about two and a half minutes of daylight every day during March, but June 21st has one last second of daylight than June 20th. To imagine this geometry, realize that the Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees, and at different points of the year, different sides of the Earth will be pointed directly at the Sun. Now the Earth revolves around the Sun, so at other times of the year, such as the equinoxes, no point of the Earth will be pointed directly at the Sun, so in terms of seasons, it will be like the Earth isn't tilted at all. The path of the subsolar point follows an equator-like line that is perpendicular to the Sun no matter where the Earth is in its revolution. The speed of the subsolar point is constant, but the eastward component of it isn't. During the summer, when part of the Earth is pointed directly towards the Sun, the subsolar point actually moves mostly eastward and not very much north to south, which means that the noon to noon time is longer and the Earth has to rotate more to point back towards the Sun. However, during the spring or fall, when the subsolar point is moving north or south more quickly, and the day length, as in time of daylight is changing more rapidly, the subsolar point isn't moving east as quickly, which means that the Earth doesn't have to rotate as much to catch up to where it was before and point back towards the sun. Therefore, days are literally longer in the summer and winter and shorter in the spring and fall. The thing is, for my location, the earliest sunset of the year is on December 6th and the latest sunrise of the year is on January 5th. This is even more spread out than during the summer. It seems like there would be another effect coming into play here. And there is. But don't worry if you didn't get the last one, since this one's a lot easier to understand, even if the overall effect isn't as big. Essentially, the Earth's path around the Sun isn't exactly circular. Instead, it's a little elliptical. This means that certain times of the year, the Earth is actually closer to the Sun. And because of gravity, when the Earth is closer to the Sun, it's actually moving faster. When the Earth is moving faster, a line pointed directly at the Sun has to rotate more to point back towards the Sun again because more of the Earth's revolution around the Sun has been completed. Here is a graph of solar day lengths throughout the year. As you can see, the average solar day length is 24 hours, which is why our modern clock system works. However, this graph demonstrates that solar days can truly deviate by up to 30 seconds from the ideal 24 hours. The Earth happens to be closest to the Sun during the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere. This means that these two effects work together in December and January, but work against each other in June and July. 
However, the effect that's due to the tilt is much more prominent. So days in June are still longer than days in September, even though they're not quite as long as days in December. The thing is, modern clocks don't deviate from 24 hours per day. This means that the sun can get ahead and behind throughout the year. Since a solar day length can be up to 30 seconds longer than a clock day around the solstices, this means that the solar time relative to clock time can change by up to 30 seconds per day as well. Since the day length doesn't change very much around the solstices, the solar time starts farther behind clock time to establish the earliest sunrise or sunset, and then accelerates forward faster than the daylight length is changing the sunrise or sunset times to establish the latest sun or set or sunrise time after the solstice has happened. This effect is more prominent the closer you get to the equator. For example, in Anchorage, Alaska, the earliest sunrise is around June 18th and the latest sunset is around June 22nd. However, in Bogota, Colombia, the earliest sunrise is in June and the latest sunset is July 17th or 18th. This is due to the angle of the sun's rays and basically the fact that the this drift of solar time and clock time is bigger proportionally in the south where the daylight length doesn't change as much where in the north the daylight length changes a lot so it's less prominent compared to the changing daylight time. Overall the earth's motion is fairly consistent however there are some small irregularities and geometric concepts that actually make differences big enough to notice in things such as the sunset and sunrise times. When I'm recording this the solstice is tomorrow however there's still over a week left for the sunsets to get later. Thank you for watching.